When humans reach a certain age, it inevitably dawns on them that their youth and youthful ambitions have slipped away from them over the years, and they realize that unless they do something quick, they're going to be too old to do fun stuff. This is what P-psychologists call a midlife crisis. Some people go buy fancy cars, some get a tattoo, some die in a skydiving accident, but some dweebs go through something a, a little more meaningful. When they realize that the time is ticking, they attempt to fend off the Grim Reaper by revisiting things from their youth. Retro games, of course. And while playing old Atari or Nintendo or DOS games won't magically take away the gray hairs in your beard or your sore back or your bifocals, it might help you connect with your inner child. The little dweeb who played Commander Keen and Duke Nukem 3D and Heroes of Might and Magic. And maybe, just maybe, by playing retro games you'll figure out what it all means and why we're here and what your true purpose is. But probably not. The games are fun though, so at least there's that. Hi there, I'm TechTweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video. So you want to play DOS games, do ya? Do ya? Yeah, I'll bet you do. Let me guess, you're in your late 30s or early 40s and you have a good life but you're feeling like something's missing and you think that maybe your old favorite PC games that you played when you were a little dweeb will fill the terrible empty void that modern life has gouged in your soul. Well, I got news for you. Yes. Yes, they will. But there's a problem. How do you play DOS games on a modern computer? Surely it's not as easy as downloading a DOS emulator like Dweeb DOS and downloading some games off the internet and buying a keyboard that looks old and pushing some buttons and then suddenly you're playing Crystal Caves, right? Well, no, actually. It's not quite that easy. There's a few extra steps and lucky for you, I exist because I'm here to show you exactly what those steps are to play your old DOS games. I'll show you the software that you need, how to find and download the games, how to set them up without needing a floppy drive or a CD-ROM drive, how to launch them, and how to dress to impress the ladies or the fellas. It's all in the socks, by the way. This is the third video in my DOS emulation series. If you haven't checked out my first two videos in the series, I'll have a link to those in the thingamajig below. Definitely check those out because I give you the history of DOS, show you how I put together this super nerdy dedicated DOS emulation setup that I have going on here. I show you how to actually use DOS and all the important DOS commands. And I also show you my custom DOS box setup, which I call Dweeb DOS. And you can view those videos and download Dweeb DOS in the whatchamacallit below. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to assume that you've watched those videos and obtained Dweeb DOS and you know a few DOS commands and you're looking to get some games and play them. And I'm also going to assume that you've already subscribed to Tech Dweeb for all your emulation and DOS needs because you're a smart cookie and only smart cookies do such things. So let's talk about how to find and download DOS games, shall we? My last video that I posted got me a copyright strike for some reason that I don't understand and YouTube didn't explain to me. I think it was because because the video scraping AI overlord determined that when I was explaining that some games are freely available because their creators have abandoned them and that there's no way to buy them legally, that I was explaining how to obtain copyrighted games for free, which I would never do. However, sarcasm aside, there are some legit, easy, and 100% legal ways to actually buy old PC games. Websites like GOG have offline installers for all their games, and the old DOS games do work great. And if you want to use them with Dweeb DOS, I'll show you how. And even Steam sells old DOS games, and lots of those games are the same as the GOG ones, and you can use the, the original DOS files that you get. However, some of them don't have that option, and it's hard to know which ones do or don't, so I suggest that you stick with GOG. GOG. And of course, there are other places you can go to find DOS games on the internet. And look at that. After a few minutes of visiting some morally questionable websites, I have a bunch of games that I downloaded and I'm ready to play them in Dweeb DOS. So how do we do that? Here is my Dweeb DOS folder. Again, link in the thingy below. In here is a games folder, and in that games folder are the freeware games that I've included with Dweeb DOS. This is where we need to add the files for our new games. One thing that I need to mention is that any folders in here need to be 8 characters or less. This is a DOS thing, well, we have a character limit, sort of like Twitter, like an 8 character version of Twitter that is nothing like Twitter. So here is one game that I found called Doom, <laughs> never heard of that game before. So obviously if I just extract this, the folder name is longer than and eight characters. And if I try to view that in DOS, it'll be cut off and awkward. So I'm going to rename the folder and call it Doom. 
<laughs> 8 characters or less. So now I can launch Dweeb DOS and play the game. Again, check out this video below if you want to learn how to use DOS commands. I'm going to view the directories, there they are, and change the directory to Doom, and view the executable files, and launch Doom.exe, and hey, look at that, it worked. <laughs> wow, what a, what a surprise, I'm, I'm very surprised at that. Let's do another game, Day of the Tentacle. That's probably some Japanese anime game. Let's try it. I'm going to do the same thing. Make a folder, extract the files, head over to DweebDOS and... Ah, there's no executable files. We just have a CD image. So some games are like this. They just come as CDs. Or maybe it'll have an application, but you try to run it and it says you need to mount uh, the CD. So should you panic and quit? Well, no, no. Just grab a root beer, chill out. This is easy to deal with. What we need to do is mount the ISO as the CD drive. And there's a command for this. Here we have a bin and Q ISO. So in this case, we're going to mount the Q file as our CD image. However, some image files are .img files. It's the same process though. The command is image mount, and then the drive letter that you want, which is D, and then the name of the image, which here is dott.cue, and then dash T for some reason, and then the type of the image it is, which here is CD-ROM, and it could also be ISO if it's an ISO, or floppy if it's a floppy image. And then it'll tell you that the image is mounted as the D drive, and you can change to that drive, and run dott.exe, and play the game. And when you exit the game, if you want to unmount the image, you can use the command mount, and then dash U for unmount, and then the drive letter, which is D. This is important if you want to go and mount a different image after you're done with your first image. So that works, but it's a, it's a lot of commands to do every time that you want to play a Japanese anime tentacle game. So one thing that I like to do is make a back file. This is optional, but it's some seriously ancient DOS knowledge that I'm dropping on you here. I hope you appreciate this stuff. Hey, have I told you about my Patreon page recently? Yeah? Okay, uh, I won't talk about it now then. Link below! So let's make a batch file to do all this stuff so that we can just type one command and it'll automatically do everything. Uh, you can do this next part in Windows if you like, but I like to do it in DOS because I'm a weirdo. So I'm going to type edit and then give my batch file a name. I like run.bat and it'll open up in the text editor that I graciously added to Dweeb DOS for you to use. And in here, I'm just going to type the commands that I want to be executed when I run the batch file. I like to put an at echo off at the start, which means that it won't show what it's doing. It'll just kind of do it in the background like magic. And then the next line is to mount our image that I just explained. Hope you were paying attention. Then the line after that is to change to the D drive and then a command to run the game. And then the next line will be after the game exits, which is to go back to our C drive and then un mount the image like I showed you. And the final line is CLS, which is just a clear screen command, just to keep things all neat and tidy. So let's save the file, exit the editor, and see how this goes. Oh gosh, I hope this works or I'll look like such a dweeb. We'll just type run and... Whoa, look at that. It worked. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I didn't doubt it for a second. And then when we exit our game, we're back at the command prompt and the image is unmounted and nobody is the wiser. Oh, by the way, I have a sample batch file that you can use as a template in the resources of DweebDOS if you just want to copy that over and edit it. And you can use batch files to do all sorts of things. Any series of commands that you would normally type, you can make a batch file and run all those commands with a single command. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it is. The final thing that I need to show you is how you can take the games that you get from stores like GOG and put them into DweebDOS if you want to run them through the command line yourself. <laughs> it's not nearly as easy as just running them through GOG and you don't get your cloud saves, but if you're like me and you want to manage and run your own games through DweebDOS, then this is how you do it. So head over to GOG and download the offline installer for one of your games. You can see here that in my GOG account I have Ultima 4 and I can download the offline installer, right? Right there. So install the game, go through the install process, and when it's done, the game will be in your GOG games folder on your C drive. So now I can make an eight character or less folder name for this game and just copy all the files over. You can delete some of the extra stuff like the DOSBox folder if you want, but that's not really necessary because this stuff is pretty small in the big picture. And then you could launch your game the same way that you would any other game. However, you and I both know that some games need CD images, so let's see how to handle that. I've also installed Ravenloft Strahd's Possession, which won't run if I just try to run it. You need to mount the disk. The easy way to handle this is just to take a look in the game directory and find the DOSBox conf file that ends in the word single. 
Open this in a text editor and you'll see a bunch of stuff here, but we're going to take note of the image mount line. So uh, I'm just going to make note of that file and do what we did earlier. In DOSBox, I'm going to make a run.bat file and add the image mount line and whatever other lines are needed to execute the game, save the file, and boom, there we go. We're, we're good to go, baby. And that, 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 that's it. That, that's all I needed to show you. You are now armed with all the knowledge that you need to download your favorite old DOS games, how to launch them, how to mount CDs and launch those games. It's a tiny bit tedious, but if you do this a few times, it'll become second nature really quick and soon enough you'll be a DOS pro like me and probably this guy. The bad news is that we're almost out of time now and I don't have time to show you a ton of games like I wanted to do. I downloaded a, a ton and I was going to show you a bunch, but I thought that it was important to teach you how to do this stuff so you can actually play these games. So I'm afraid that I'll have to do another video or multiple videos in the very near future to show you some games. But I don't want to leave you empty handed, so how's about I'll show you one game that I love and tell you a fun little story. This is Doom. I'm pretty sure everyone knows Doom. If you, if you don't know Doom, then you're doomed. That's all there is to it. When I was a little dweeb, we never had good computers. My mom basically raised me on her own and we never had much money. My friend Ruben, who lived in the big city, his family had lots of money, so they always had nice computers. And when Doom came out, I got to try it on his computer and I was freaking blown away. I know it looks primitive by today's standards, but at the time, this was like mind-blowingly good. It was way ahead of anything that came before it. I dreamed of one day having a computer that could run Doom so that I could play it all the way through myself instead of just for a little bit at Ruben's house. So about a year later, we finally got a computer with a color monitor that could sort of play Doom. Not really, I had to shrink the screen down to a tiny little square just to be able to get a good enough frame rate, but I was happy that I could at least play it. The problem was that we only had a 40 megabyte hard drive on our computer. Doom came on four floppy disks. Windows 3.1 took up like 25 megabytes and then we had sound card software and we had some other programs and documents so we didn't have enough room on our hard drive for doom the only way that i could play it was to uninstall windows every time i wanted to play doom i had to uninstall windows install doom play doom and then when i was done if mom needed to use the computer again i'd have to uninstall doom and reinstall windows for her and i'd have to do it all again the next time that i wanted to play doom but I was so nuts about this game, I was willing to go through all that and play in a tiny window just because I could finally play Doom on my own computer. I remember I used to wait until mom was asleep and sneak down to the computer and I'd plug in my crappy dollar store headphones and play in the dark. One time mom saw that I was playing and she walked up to me to tell me to go to bed and I didn't hear her because I had headphones on and I was blasting demons and she touched my shoulder to get my attention and she startled me so bad that I literally screamed at like the top of my lungs and I jumped up and I knocked over over the plant on the table beside the computer. <laughs> oh man, I'll never forget that moment. This is what playing old retro games is all about, man. Not just for the games themselves, but playing these games can take you back in time. Bring up all these old memories of when you nearly peed your pants getting scared playing Doom. And I don't know about you, but it helps me kind of feel like I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, like young Techweeb had no idea how life would go or how to do stuff or be an adult or how he'd be able to play video games when he had a fancy job and his own cat and a house and all that. But little did he know that when he was 40, he'd still be living with mom. He'd have his own cat who was his best friend. No need for a job because he makes YouTube videos and he'd have all the doom that he could ever want playing on a DOS emulation PC that reminds him of being a kid who was just happy that he could play some doom. And at this point, if anyone is still watching, I should probably wrap it up because I'm getting all sentimental and squishy on you. I hope you found this useful. I hope you enjoyed Dweeb DOS and use this knowledge to play your old favorite DOS games or explore the vast library of DOS games that are uh, out there that existed. I'm super excited for the next DOS videos that I make because I've, I've gotten the tutorial stuff out of the way and now I can show you the games. And I have so many freaking games to show you guys. Oh man, it's gonna be good. So get subscribed. So so you don't miss that make sure you check out my other dos videos link below but that'll do it from me for today i'm tech dweeb and remember spaghetti and motherboards both have something in common they're better without forks Bye bye